Some time ago, the Polish armed forces embarked on a transformational journey, one that would establish them as a big, powerful armed force in Europe. In 2021, a huge and expensive rearmament plan was announced. Mind you, that was all before the recent geopolitical events. Since then, the Polish army buying spree has only sped up. Right now, Poland may indeed become one of the strongest militaries in the EU, with a focus on ground forces. On land, even if just half the Polish plans come to fruition, the Polish army may eclipse all other army formations in Western and Central Europe. This video will go in depth of it all and show how. One of Europe's strongest armies is Polish, no doubt. But you know what else is apparently Polish? Some of my ancestors didn't know that. My heritage is sponsoring this video and their service helps you find your ancestors. By accessing their massive database, holding over 18 billion searchable records, I was able to create a fairly detailed family tree. I must say it felt a little bit like I was a detective, searching for people and piecing together a picture of my family history, until I got to this big family tree. My Heritage is the number one family history service in Europe and they also offer DNA tests and photo restoration. A look at this, I can upload old photos and enhance them, remove scratches, colorize them, make them new. And look at this, they can even animate your photos, bringing your ancestors to life. How cool is that? I have no idea who that woman is though. Over a hundred million users rely on my heritage. I didn't know that much about my family's origins. My heritage helped find distant family members with fairly little effort. And if you're up for it, they can help you. Sign up for a 14-day free trial. And if you decide to continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount. Just use the link below my video. Back to our video now. The armed forces need personnel to man all the exciting new toys, and indeed Poland is planning to increase the number of its troops. But let us start with the big hardware Poland either bought or announced that it will be buying since the 2000s. This list will try to be comprehensive, but it's possible certain items will be left out. Aircraft-wise, Poland initially topped up with used MiG-29s, ordered from Germany in 2002. It also purchased four second-hand anti-submarine helicopters from the US. It got 13 used Mi-8 or Mi-17 helicopters from various countries during the 2000s. It bought 17 C-295 small transport planes in several batches over the years. One big purchase was definitely in 2003, when Poland signed a contract for 48 F-16s of the latest available variant back then. Those started deliveries in 2006. And Poland actually got a decent number of weapons and other systems for their jets. For example, Germany, having several times more planes, actually ordered fewer weapons per aircraft from the 1990s to 2020. The M346 advanced trainer jets were ordered from 2014 onward. Hercules medium transport planes were ordered secondhand in small batches in the last two decades as well. Eight Black Hawk helicopters were recently obtained, signaling a gradual switch towards Western source helicopters. Four large Augusta Westland naval helos were also bought recently, though probably the biggest recent contract was for 32 F-35 fighter jets. Now, those are all impressive numbers for Poland, a country that does fall behind in economic output when compared to European powerhouses like Germany, France or the UK. But understandably, they do fall behind actual aircraft procurements of those three European powers. When it comes to ships, Polish purchases are fairly slim. Poland does not seem to be even trying to be a big player in the Baltic Sea. In the early 2000s, it got two used Perry-class frigates from the US and several Type 207 submarines, also used, though all those have been retired by now. A single Mech 100 type vessel was procured, then launched in 2015. So while there are plans for further ships of other types, Poland is definitely saving their funds when it comes to their navy. It does operate coastal anti-ship batteries, one of the few European countries that does that, using pretty modern NSM missiles. But the one area in which Poland does not seem to be stingy is land forces. The amount of heavy and or advanced weapons procured in the last two decades is impressive. Poland signed contracts for almost a thousand Patria wheeled armored vehicles, with a few hundred being infantry fighting vehicles with a modern Hitfist turret. They armed them with spike anti-tank missiles. Poland got a few thousand of those.
perhaps in order to compensate for their air force numbers, Poland is going pretty hard for modern and potent air defense systems. First, it ordered four Patriot fire units in 2018. Those formed two batteries, but given that each fire unit has its own radar, one could really talk about four mini batteries. Poland also recently requested a sale of six more batteries from the US. It is also procuring a partially domestic developed SAM system, which will be using British CAM missiles. Two batteries are contracted for now to be delivered this year, but total numbers for the future are not known at this point. Poland is also planning to expand its unmanned aerial vehicle fleet considerably. It bought 24 Bayraktar TB2 drones in 2021. Back in 2016, the Polish Defense Ministry stated it sees the need for 1,200 drones, of which a thousand would be combat capable. To this day, however, not much has been done on that front. While a 1,200 UAVs is perfectly achievable if one includes even tiny cheap drones, the thousand combat ones is not. Combat drones need to either carry weapons or be suicide drones. The first option requires a drone the size of a Bayraktar, at least. It's still too expensive. The latter option of kamikaze drones, if modeled after famous switchblade drones, for example, may actually be affordable. But who knows when such figures might be attained. And those aren't really UAVs, but guided munitions. Poland is also in the process of acquiring new attack helicopters. Currently, the US Apache E and Viper models are in the competition. Poland is planning to buy 32 helicopters, which, given the overall size of Polish forces, is an above average figure. And when it comes to tanks, Poland is ahead of all three big European powers. In numbers, definitely. Only Greece has more tanks, but most of theirs are really old types. Poland, on the other hand, has recently signed a contract for 250 Abrams tanks, SCP V3 models too which are the latest models that the US Army is also gradually procuring. On top of those, 116 used Abrams tanks were signed for this July, to be hastily delivered from the beginning of next year. Those may be replacements for the alleged PT-91 tank deliveries to Ukraine. Those have yet to be delivered, but Poland also has used Leopard 2 tanks, bought between 2002 and 2013. Those are currently being modernized to a customized Polish standard, which will bring them close to the newest Leopard 2 tanks, capability-wise. Poland is thus poised to operate roughly 500 Leopard 2 and Abrams tanks of recent vintage. Even when reserve tank stocks are included, other powers like Germany, France or the UK can't match those numbers. Abrams tanks will replace the old T-72s and partially even the modernized ones, named PT-91. There are rumors of even more Abrams tanks planned, and Polish Defense Minister recently claimed contracts for South Korean tanks and infantry fighting vehicles will be signed. Poland is interested in technology transfer and local assembly of K2 tanks. Finally, another area where Poland seems to be outgunning bigger European nations is artillery. Poland has ordered 122 modern self-propelled howitzers with Korean chassis and British turrets. A little over 70 have been delivered so far. Poland has more artillery pieces than the big three European powers combined. Granted, some of those are older artillery pieces, which will likely need replacement soon. For example, 20 HIMARS launchers were bought but not yet delivered from the US. Those will likely be replacing some of the older MRLs. Those include 70km range satellite guide missiles, which makes the system much more lethal than the unguided 122mm systems Poland now has. Curiously, the Polish Ministry of Defense has on May 26th announced that a letter of request for information on a further mammoth sale of HIMARS systems has been delivered to the US. For a record 500 HIMARS launcher systems, the Polish Ministry of Defense alleges those would make up as many as 80 firing batteries. Usually, such a plan would be just wishful thinking, but with the letter of request, there may be something there. While ultimately 500 launchers may or may not be procured, it's evident Poland is going for many launchers, possibly echoing the US Marine Corps thinking. The Marines want to reconfigure their battalions, which have three gun batteries and one HIMARS battery, into battalions with three HIMARS batteries and one gun battery. Even if it's not going to replace their current artillery pieces one for one, it's evident Poland is gunning for having the most numerous and the most precise artillery force in Western Europe. 
Finally, Poland still uses old Soviet-style BMP-tracked infantry fighting vehicles. Those are to be replaced by domestically developed Borsuk vehicles from 2023 or so. There are some rumors that South Korean K-21 vehicles might be bought as an interim solution. Numbers are not known, but Poland has 1200 BMP vehicles in service right now. Also, Poland is increasing the number of their maneuver brigades, so it's very likely hundreds if not a thousand advanced IFVs will eventually be procured. Right now, the active part of the armed forces of Poland numbers some 110,000 personnel. The Territorial Army is a separate organization, made up of volunteers led by a core of professional army reservists. Let's compare those numbers to some of Europe's biggest militaries. First off, not all countries use the same metric. The British, for example, lack the Joint Command Forces category. If one would attempt to redistribute the Joint Service Forces to the three main branches using the same ratio of personnel, one would get the following, not counting the reserve formations, of course. While Poland is obviously not going to be an air power or a naval power comparable to the bigger European countries, it's also noticeable that Poland is getting ever closer to the big European powers when it comes to land forces. However, without the reserve formations, the comparison isn't complete. Once the Polish Territorial Army is added, the British Regular and Volunteer Reserves are added, and French and German Reserves are added, the final tally looks like this. It is worth noting that federal police and various gendarmerie units, even though sometimes expected to help in wars, are not part of this calculus. As said though, Poland plans to increase its numbers immensely in the coming decades. A homeland defense bill was recently passed in the Polish parliament. It calls for an armed force numbering 300,000, including the territorial army. Funding mechanisms for that increase have also been defined, and as expected, the plan is to have an armed forces support fund financed outside the traditional military budget. But more about finances later. While the other countries may increase their forces too, it's impossible to say right now just by how much each country will actually increase their armed forces. If even half of the planned Polish increase actually happens, it's plausible we'll be looking at the strongest land force in Europe, with over 200,000 personnel in the land forces alone. While the other European powers will likely also increase their other branches, Poland seems set on a course of continued focus on its land forces. So for every euro spent on every new person enlisted in the future force, Poland may be giving 75% of it to the land army, while other European powers armies will likely get 60%. Another reason why Polish land force increases are more likely than those in other countries is this. Much of the infrastructure for such an increase has already been planned and established in the Polish army. Let's go back to the land force numbers, without the reserve formations. When all the land force units are brought to the common denominator of a generic brigade, it's visible that Poland has far more brigades than any other country on the list. That's because the Polish army is still reorganizing. For example, they announced a whole new division in 2018, the fourth one in total. And two of its three planned brigades have already started filling up with troops. But even the units Poland has right now are understaffed. While their divisions should have around 15,000 maneuver troops, they have around 10,000. So Poland made a system where they keep their units partially staffed, but if need arises, they can more easily fit further personnel in an already established brigade. Indeed, if all brigades in all the countries would be filled up the same way, let's say an average of 5,000 personnel, plus another 6,000 in various support personnel outside the brigade, Poland would have to have far more troops, in order to fill up their 14 brigades. And that's not all. On June 13th, Polish defense minister said two more divisions will be formed in the future, for a total of six. If that plan does go forward, then the 300,000 soldier army starts looking attainable. Even if the 300,000 soldier military plan ultimately doesn't happen, it's quite plausible the overall total, with the ever-increasing territorial army, will manage to reach 240,000. With just the land forces being 200,000, it would be by far the biggest land force in the EU, and it will eclipse the UK's as well. The current Polish military budget is some 14 billion US dollars. That's far less than the UK's, French or German budgets. But those other countries also spend much more on other services, and are not as focused on land power. 
Of course, salaries in Poland are smaller, which allows comparable troop numbers for less money. From 2013 to 2016, some 28% of budget went into procurement and modernization of equipment, which is rather high. There was a dip in the past few years, but the announced future plans seem to call for even more equipment spending. In 2021, the Polish Defense Ministry said it would spend an additional $33 billion over the next 11 years for arms procurement. Coupled with previous spending plans, the ministry also projected it would be spending 123 billion US dollars on various aspects of military modernization until 2035. That's some 10 billion per year, roughly three times as much spending as it was until now. Indeed, even the official budget spending is set to increase. If the special funds are added, as mentioned, there might indeed be money for a vast increase of the military. Some half measures are already being planned to finance it all. For example, volunteer basic military service is supposed to be a big part of the increase. It would entail 28 days of basic training, followed by 11 months of other service. Those soldiers would receive a private salary of some thousand euros, but are to live at home, with their army service basically being a 9 to 5 job. How well will all that go remains to be seen. Everything is really up in the air and 2023 will bring elections for Poland and possibly a new government. But with the recent geopolitical events and calls for stronger armies in Europe, it's not unimaginable that Poland will stay the course and indeed transform itself into a military powerhouse of Europe. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.